Welcome to Downshift, my name is Matt. I'm here with the Genesis G80 Electrify, the EV one. And today's video is gonna look a little bit different for two reasons. First is that I'm here at Road America, test driving basically everything I can get my hands on. So the usual production quality is gonna get scrapped because speed and agility is the name of the game. And two, we're gonna try a little bit different format today. So if you like what you see at the end of the video, leave it down in the comments, but let's get in to the G80e. <laughs> For the sake of this video, we're covering all of the coolest features of the G80e, and we're going to start with the EV stuff. Now, this has an 87.2 kilowatt hour battery. It also gets about 91 mpge, which means between those two, it's good for about 282 miles of range, which is pretty dang good. And then you also have the 800 volt architecture that underpins this and a lot of the other, well, all of the other Genesis, Hyundai, and Kia models, which means you can charge from about 10 to 80 percent very quickly around the 20 minute mark, maybe even a little bit less, again, with the right conditions. So this is a pretty good place to start. And in terms of styling, this G80 looks a lot like the gas car, but being the EV, there are some changes that have been made to maximize range and aerodynamics. First is the grill, as you can see here. It looks like the normal grill, but it's kind of inversed, where this would normally be open to feed air into the engine, and then this would be the bar for the grill. Of course, it's all flush to maximize aero efficiency, and then you have a little bit of cooling down there. But this here, this is the G, where you then open it up, and you have your charging port, which is a perfect application for me because when I pull into my garage, the charger's on the back wall. So that's really convenient to have that there. There are also a couple differences in terms of wheels. This is a more multi-spoke design for the wheel that is specific to the electrified version of this G80. And then, of course, we get around back and we have no exhaust on the rear bumper, obviously. But those are really the only styling differences between the electric and non-electric G80. And we're going to talk about the trunk. It is hands-free, but there are some compromises that you make with the electric version. The trunk is noticeably smaller than it is in the gas car. The floor is a little bit higher, and you have this hump here, which is, of course, not there in the gas version. You still have a little pass-through back there, but the trunk is compromised a bit. The GV70 does a better job at transitioning into an EV, at least in terms of cargo space. And then of course, being an electric car, a lot of the interior is made from recycled materials. Now the dash specifically is made from recycled newspapers and wood. Pretty cool. And then we'll talk about sunroof. And you notice that there's no sunroof and that's for a reason. With the battery pack being under the floor, the floor has actually been raised and they've raised the roof another two inches to accommodate headroom, especially in the back. However, they didn't feel that they could offer enough headroom if they put in a sunroof. And one of my favorite things about these Genesis cars is that you can get a 3D gauge cluster, which never translates on, on camera, but it actually looks pretty cool in real life. Not super practical, kind of gimmicky, but kind of cool too. And then as we check out the rear seats, we see that we do have manual sunshades. Very nice, classic. And we get in, we have noticeably less room than we did in the gas version. You have three inches less knee room and an inch less headroom. Like I said, that's why they can't offer that panoramic sunroof. And another weird thing that you can't get is heated rear seats. You can get that in the gas G80. Weird. And then there's the front seats, which look fantastic. They're nice and comfortable. They're heated, they're cooled, and the driver gets to enjoy ergo motion massage. Not the passenger though. And then of course there's your center screen. It is huge, super wide screen. And of course you can have multiple things going at the same time. It is wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And at this price point, I start to expect wireless, but it's still nice that you can have it at all. Especially in the fact that a lot of Teslas, Rivians, and other EV bespoke brands can't get CarPlay at all. And then of course you have really, really nice 360 cameras and you have that kind of augmented reality spinny view. And look how, look how fast, there's no latency here. I can spin this car for days and it's real quick. And the last thing is I think it just looks cool. Genesis always has some of the coolest paints. I think this is the Halasan Green uh, $575 paint option, but I think it just looks awesome. I like what they've done with the grill and cleverly integrated that charge port on the front. I love the way that the running lights bleed into the front fender in a really classy and thought out way. I like the wheels. They have a very luxe feeling to them. And then of course you've got tasteful chrome down on the bottom that then continues into your uh, rear end. But look at this paint. Look at that. Look at the metal flake. I mean, some of the best paint in the game is from Genesis. And then of course, it's a nice cohesive design. 
these dual bars go up from the front fender to the headlights and into the taillights. Very nice. So those are the coolest features of the G80 Electrified. Now we're gonna grab the key and take it for a spin. All right, Genesis G80 Electrified. Brake, power, release brake. It's quick. It is quick and it's smooth and it's eerily quiet. There is no propulsion sound in here at all. And again, kind of like everything else that I was talking about, you start to hear it. You start to hear the wind on the A-pillar and the front windshield, and you become very aware of it around, yeah, about 60 miles an hour is when it starts to become pretty apparent. But anyway, we have 365 horsepower here and 516 pound-feet of torque. So we actually have a little bit less horsepower than we did in the GV70 electrified that we just tested. And we also don't have that boost button on the center steering wheel here. So this is a little bit less violent and maybe that's because this is the g80 it's a little bit more mature it's a little bit more upmarket but there's absolutely nothing wrong with the smoothness that we have here i'm going to go into comfort mode because it does have the adaptive suspension with the road reading preview and we're just going to set off brilliantly smooth a little tiny bit of whir from the motors but brilliantly quiet in here excellently quiet you also have the active sound cancellation so there's speakers outside or there's microphones listening to the outside and speakers on the inside playing inverted sound waves so it's canceling the the road noise before it gets to your ears which is just incredible what they're able to do here that with the suspension the suppleness of the ride the smoothness that it builds power it doesn't snap your neck like we had in the polestar 2 yesterday it's very, very well calibrated here to be a luxury product, and it still has a bit of spunk in sport mode. But again, I like that even in sport mode, it kind of builds power a little bit so you're not immediately just thrusted and snapped in the, in the back of the head. I really, really like it. There is one thing that I don't love, though, and it's the fact that I feel very much like I'm sitting on top of the car and I don't feel like I'm sitting in the car. I have the seat at its lowest setting. I'm 6'1", so I guess I'm on the taller side of average. And, you know, if I look straight forward, this is about where my eyes are, which is just a little bit too high, I think. So a shorter person might feel a little bit more comfortable, but I very much feel like I'm sitting on top of the car. The steering wheel feels low, and of course you can change that, but I do wish the seat would get a little bit lower in here. Now, that being said, I have a nice high driving position. I have good visibility out the front, the back, and the sides. So again, it's just, it's very, very nice. You can dial it back into comfort. You can have 3D gauge cluster going on. I can turn on my ergo motion massage. I can do pelvic stretching. I can do lumbar stretching. My chiropractor would love it. I mean, it's a good car. It's incredibly smooth. It looks good. It's got great tech. The only place that I'm going to ding it on is a couple, well, I guess a couple places. Not having wireless CarPlay, no pano roof, and the seating position is a bit high. Those are really the only places I can ding it. Let's see how it handles these curves at speed. Steering feels pretty good. There's a nice weight to it. There's some resistance. I can kind of feel what the tires are doing, but at no point does it feel unrefined. It still is very much a luxury car first that just happens to be very powerful and very quick. Zero to 60 in like the low four second range. I don't know if I mentioned that, but yeah, I mean, if we think about it, this is kind of exactly what the electric powertrain makes sense for. Something like this, that's a luxury car, that's intended to be smooth. You can have the adaptive suspension and the noise canceling and the smoothness of the electric power. It's so refined, there's no vibrations or buzzing from an engine, there's no exhaust sound. It's, it's a very, very, very civilized experience. And I think it's very much fitting of a luxury car like this G80 because it is genuine luxury. I love the open pore dash, the wood here is fantastic, the leathers are supple. I'm getting my massage here. This is a brilliant, brilliant luxury car. Is it perfect? No. But is it very good? Yes.